This is a Harman Kardon Citation 12 Stereophonic Power Amplifier and I'm going to guess this is probably from the 70s. Not much to it. And I will issue a warning right off the right out of the gate that I am not the best at fixing these things. This is really not my forte. Um, if you're into this kind of stuff, I recommend that you subscribe to Jordan Peer. That's his YouTube name. If he's probably one of the best. Uh, classic hi-fi guys out there as far as classic hi-fi res restoration repair and he posts videos when he has time so that should save me from the criticism in the comments that I don't know what the hell I'm doing because you know what you're right anyway hopefully we can figure it out it's very basic it's old and if it blows up well I can just put it in the trash now I did check it out and it has a huge DC offset on one of the channels and what I mean by that is it's just got like 35 volts DC with no input across one of the channels. So we'll take a quick look at that. So this channel here comes down to right down to almost zero, negative 0 0.02 and this channel here has positive 41.3 volts DC on it. What do you think that would do to an 8 ohm speaker real quick? It's either going to blow the fuse or it's going to blow the speaker or it's going to blow the transistor. Now I would suspect that one of the output transistors is shorted and probably everything behind it is destroyed. But let's get it open and let's check it out. And I just want to clarify real quick, when I say everything behind it, this is what I mean. These are the output drivers right here, the output transistors. And they're directly coupled to all of these transistors back behind it. All of this is DC coupled. So usually when one of these shorts, it'll pop all of these back here. And the trick is, is if you don't get all of the bad parts out of here and you replace these, when you turn it back on, it's all going to fry again. So there's very little room for air here. Uh, really need a lot of experience when working on these DC coupled amplifiers. And this is not something you send somebody a message on YouTube asking them to help you fix it because you can't. Alright, so having a look at the construction here, it looks like we have, it almost looks like it's two separate amplifiers, dual mono block or whatever they call that. It's got two power transformer, two sets of filters. Um, what are these? It's got some bizarre number on it, 4219 or something. Anyway, thermal cutoffs right there, right there. Two transistors per channel, probably 30, 35 watts per channel, I would guess, somewhere in there. So look at the underside. Two separate bridge rectifiers, separate capacitors. It's all separate. All right, well, using the diode checker on the meter, I'm not finding any emitter to uh, collector junction shorts at all. So next thing I want to do is I want to check the bias on the transistors. It should be about a half a volt base to emitter. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, this transistor, the bias is 0.545. That looks, this transistor right here has zero bias. That would cause a problem. See, the transistors are supposed to be biased on just a little bit, and they're supposed to be equally biased on, so it's zero in the middle. This one here, which is on the good channel, is biased at 0.547. And this one here on the good channel is biased at 0.545. So one of these is being biased on, the other one's not. And it's not shorted, so something back here 
is not turning this transistor on. That's why we're getting that huge voltage here because they're not balancing. Because there's a positive and a negative B plus voltage on the transistors and in the middle is zero. I checked as much as I could uh, and I can't seem to find anything so I decided to just pull the board out and start checking the transistors one at a time, the drivers and I noticed that this thing is I mean almost is this is this like a joke or what? Or seriously like what is this about? Maybe that's just the way it is. It doesn't bite. Once once you push it down all the way it bites, but it's not not real. It doesn't seem real secure. I don't know. You got to push it down all the way and then they they bite. All right, I've checked everything here and I'm cheating a little bit I'm comparing it to the other channel and of course the very last thing I check is this one of the input transistors and I am showing a short from base to emitter uh, let me pull that out and let's have a look that's hard to believe that one of the input amps could short but hey I guess at this age and this transistor is shorted from base to emitter. And what's interesting is this is the audio input right here. This is a transistor that's shorted. I wonder if someone whacked something in there that was uh, more than it could handle. Now trying to find a substitute for it. Alright, here's what I settled on NTE383. Just partially because I'm lazy. Um, you can see that's a PNP right there and it's got about 38 volts across it so I wanted to use something with a high enough voltage. I know this is way overkill but I'm lazy. It'll work. If you want to take a look at the old one there it is. I'm not quite sure how to read that number. It's some proprietary thing. And confirming it in our little Chinesey testery thingy. So there's a new transistor. You can see the big one there. It's kind of bodged in, but whatever. It's a audio frequency amp, so it's what NTE says it must be true. If it's NTE, it must be good. Uh, apparently, these the way these connectors work is just that. So, not real impressive, but uh, I don't know. Who am I to question a great American manufacturer like Harman Kardon? All right, here we go. Do we have smoke and fire, or do we have success? I have uh, the meter on the output. And here we go. Power. Ooh, looking good. So the offset's off a little bit. And we have uh, 0.345 volts bias on this, which is way off. And we have 0.3 on this side. Now that's adjustable via that pot right there. And the way we adjust this is we measure between these two test poles here and adjust that for current. So what I'm going to do, since I don't know what the spec is, I'm going to measure the drop there and mimic it. So on this side we have 0 .009. God, that's hardly nothing. And on this side we have absolute zero. So I'm going to move this pot here. And I'm going to see. I still got zero. And this pot is wigging out because when I turn it, it's not doing much except jumping around. 
I'm turning it, I'm turning it, I'm turning it, I'm turning it, turning it. Yeah, this pot is junk. I need to replace the pot. Crap. It's a 4.7K pot. Alright, a new Panasonic 5K trim pot has been installed. I'm measuring the bias. I've got the pot set right in the middle. I hope that's not too high or too low to start because I don't know. Here we go. And we have 0.5 volts bias. So let's turn this pot a little bit and let's see what happens. Oh yeah, now it's changing. All right, now let me get connected back onto our test points and we were 0 0.009 on that side. All right, now we're at 0 0.003 on this side. Let me turn it up a little bit. 0 0.004. Five, seven, oh boy, it gets real touchy there at the end. 0 0.009. 0 0.009 across the test point. So go back and check the other side. On this side, we have 0 0.009 also. What that is, is that's the drop across one of these resistors so you're basically measuring the current draw the biased on current draw using that resistor as your shunt and checking the bias voltage it's 0 0.554 0 0.555 so this is looking good looking good I sure hope the audio file that buys us and puts five hundred dollars worth of uh, custom capacitors in it doesn't notice a difference in the sound quality between that pot in the old original pot. I would really hate for that to happen. I like to turn it all the way down to just where I can barely hear it and see if there's, I hear like it's unbiased. And no, it doesn't. It sounds good. How about a little Miss Miller here? Monday, Monday. So good to me. Damon, a talking picture of you. Sit there in the gloom of your lonely little room and applaud each time I whisper, I love you. All right, let's try that again since it lost my last clip. I'm hooked up to the side that was good, the untouched side, and uh. Same thing, I turn it all the way down to where I can barely hear it. And it sounds clean, so I think we're good. And of course the temperature feels even and equal. It's been on for about a half hour and I'm gonna call this one a success. So whoever gets this next will uh, probably, hopefully love it and Maybe recap it. You could probably even recap it without taking the board out. Um, it's got the original output transistors, the original drivers. The only thing that, that I had to change was that transistor there. And I really suspect that was fried by somebody driving something harsh into the front end that, that fried it. And the pot, which I think I damaged by moving. They're just old and fragile. So... Harman Kardon Citation Repair. A little bit better than the 1980s Chevrolet Citation.